So my name's Nick Evans, I'm an Associate Professor at the University of Southampton here in the UK. So my name is Agnieszka Janacek and I've recently finished a PhD at the University of Southampton in UK. And our research is focused on trying to understand the way that stem cells respond to stimuli and to see whether or not we can speed up bone fracture healing in patients. Populations are increasing in their average ages, it means that fractures are more likely. In many cases bone fractures will fail to heal sufficiently or within a short enough time frame. So therapies that aim to increase the speed of bone fracture healing are really important. And we've been trying to do this by using stem cells and by trying to stimulate them with the WINT signaling pathway agents. So skeletal stem cells are one of the stem cell populations present in our bone marrow. And they're also referred to sometimes as mesenchymal stem cells. And uh, these cells have the ability to uh, form new bone tissue and they're also responsible for healing fractures when a bone fracture occurs. For instance, if you have mutations which elevate wind signaling, you tend to get massive bone overgrowth. There are lots of genetic conditions um, which have that cause. Um, it's also important in some of the stem cells that are present in bone tissue. Um, as I said, there's lots of stem cells present in the bone. Um, and it's thought that it may regulate the proliferation of these cells or their differentiation. And we thought that perhaps it was the, the timing, so the, the stage at which um, a stem cell or an osteoblast receive a wind signal, which is very important in how that particular cell responds to it. And obviously that's important therapeutically because if you want to use wind stimulation to try and improve bone fracture healing, you have to know at what time to deliver it. So we work with the hypothesis that early transient stimulation of uncommitted cells could increase their proliferation and lead to their subsequent osteoblastic differentiation, whereas inappropriate stimulation could actually inhibit that process. So we've characterised bone marrow cell populations by facts, and we've also measured the intrinsic marker, wind signaling marker levels in these populations after wind stimulation and without it. And what we've noticed is that skeletal stem cells have intrinsically elevated levels of wind signaling and these cells are also responsive to wind stimulation. With the use of fax and also colony forming assays, we've noticed that this transient stimulation uh, of bone marrow isolates increased the population of skeletal stem cells and osteoprogenitors. With the use of qPCR, and also measurement of protein expression uh, characteristic for bone as well as calcium deposition, we've noticed that this transient wind stimulation increased osteogenic differentiation of our stem and progenitor cells, where surprisingly prolonged overstimulation abrogated this effect and osteogenic differentiation uh, was inhibited. So in summary, we've seen that this transient wind stimulation increase the number of osteoprogenitors and increase their differentiation towards bone, whereas prolonged overstimulation of the pathway inhibited this osteodifferentiation. So based on our findings, it's very important clearly that the timing and site of activation is really important in having a good outcome in terms of what bone stem cells and osteoblasts do. So we think that future therapies that work by agonising wind signalling will have to function in the correct spatiotemporal manner. For instance, there are lots of monoclonal antibodies being developed which agonise wind signalling, which have had good effects in osteoporosis, but have yet to have been shown to have efficacy in bone fracture healing. So we think that approaches where you deliver compounds which elevate wind signalling will have to take into account that context. Bone fracture healing is a very complex series of overlapping events. Inappropriate wind stimulation at the wrong stage of fracture healing could have negative effects on fracture healing. So we think that a better understanding of when you stimulate uh, wind signaling during fracture healing is very important for the development of these drugs, which eventually we hope to use in people in the clinic.